Hello everyone, I'm back with another quick machining tip and this time I want to talk about everybody's favorite part of machining, deburring. Now I'm being a little bit facetious here, but deburring is an incredibly important yet often neglected aspect of machining. Let's discuss some tips, tools, and philosophy around deburring, so hit that subscribe button and let's get started. First of all, why is deburring so important? Well, the most obvious answer is that burrs can affect your measurements and the fit of your parts. This is a part that a student turned into me for my class, and they did not do a very good job at all of knocking off the burrs around the tapped hole. If I measure this part away from the hole, it's within tolerance, but if I measure it over the burr, it's out of spec. The opposite can be true as well. I've had students measure their parts over a burr only to remove it later and find the part is now too small. You can pretty easily see how a burr like this could cause issues with fitting parts together. The part could rock or skew to one side. It can also cause interference or misalignment between pieces. Burrs can also mess with future operations, especially on the milling machine. This one has a burr right here that you can feel but can't see on camera probably, and that's from side milling. A burr like this sitting on top of a parallel will angle the part and result in a tapered cut. Even if the print doesn't show a parallelism tolerance, it will certainly have a dimensional tolerance, and that burr can easily cause you to miss it. I always ask my students to ask themselves, if you were the customer, would you pay for this part? Putting it like that tends to make people stop and think. Even someone who's brand new to the trade can appreciate the difference when they put themselves in the customer's shoes. Burrs make a part look unfinished, and they can also be razor sharp in some materials. I always try pretty hard to keep my blood inside my body where it belongs, and I'm certainly not going to want to pay for something that's going to make that difficult. Deburring should be considered part of the process for every single project, just like touching off tools, measuring, and cleaning up when you're done. Here are some principles to keep in mind. When possible, deburr the part while it's in the machine. There is no excuse for something coming off the lathe with burrs. It takes so very little time to pick up a file and break the edges, or use a countersink or deburring tool in a hole. Likewise, deburring should almost always be done on a CNC machine. Yes, it adds to the cycle time and gives you another tool change, but it's still faster than doing it by hand. You should also always cut chamfers on your threaded parts before you thread so you don't have to remove a giant burr. Getting rid of that burr after the fact almost always rolls over the first thread and leads to even more work. This goes for internal and external threads, whether they're single point threaded or cut with a tap or die. On the manual mill, deburring on the machine is usually more trouble than it's worth unless you have a certain chamfer called out on the edges. Most of the time, it's faster and easier to deburr by hand. Finally, let's talk about tools. Of course, we have files. They're the workhorses of the deburring tools at our disposal. They come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and cuts, and it's good to have a nice selection to choose from. But if you're new to the game, start with maybe an 8 to 10 inch mill bastard file and a set of decent needle files. Those will cover the vast majority of your deburring needs. I could easily make a video just about files if I thought anyone would actually watch it, but there are two main points you should know about them. Number one, they only cut on the push stroke, so sawing back and forth with them isn't going to make you more productive. B, you can never have too many. Next up are these swiveling deburring tools. The curved blade pivots around to follow the edge of the part. They work great for quickly breaking the edges on holes either on or off the machine. They're equally at home on straight edges though, and I use them all the time on keyways and slots. Most of them have interchangeable blades, and there are a lot of different types for different materials and shapes of parts. Triangular scrapers can also do a lot of these same tasks and are also available in different sizes. Both of these work well on light burrs, but they tend to get hung up on heavier ones. 
I use countersinks to knock the burrs off of holes, and I keep several sizes around for my various needs. When I'm working on big jobs with lots of holes, I keep a countersink and a cordless drill. This makes breaking all of those edges a simple job. Another option is a deburring wheel on a grinder or buffer. These are abrasive wheels similar to Scotch-Brite, but much firmer. They're not as aggressive as a grinding wheel, but will still polish off burrs from straight and gently curved edges. They can be very aggressive with softer materials, so my advice is to start with a light touch and add pressure as necessary. Lastly, let's talk about vibratory tumblers. These use an abrasive medium that's held in a bowl or a drum that vibrates. The parts are thrown in and allowed to shake around for a little while until the edges are all polished off. This is a small one that's sold by Harbor Freight, but industrial units can be very large. If you have any questions or topics you want me to cover in a future video, leave those down in the comments section below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you think I've earned it, and please consider supporting my channel on Patreon like these awesome folks right here, including my newest patron, Ray Benitez. Hi there, Ray. Welcome to the club. You might also want to check out these other videos. On the right is my constantly expanding playlist of quick machining tips just like this one. I have my most recent video in the top left, and in the bottom left there's a video YouTube thinks you'll like as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.